At some point earlier in December, I saw Jonathan Burns' O-Cube, which is a very small and cute little puzzle that is basically a skew mechanism inside a cage, such that only the skew centers are actually visible, and so that each skew center is seen as a small circle on what appears to be a face of a 1x1. One one. So the end result is, it just looks like you have a big 1x1 one one with a circle on each face. I really liked how this puzzle looked, so I got thinking, is there any other mechanism that could turn out looking like this? So I decided to go ahead and actually make a 3x3 three three that looks like this. I actually started by creating a spherical 3x3 three three extension mod. After the sphere was done, I created a cage around the sphere, which was in the shape of a cube. And then I removed the entire sphere from this cage. And from there, all I had to do was attach the cage to all of the 3x3 three three corners, and then cut down the 3x3 three three centers so that they were flat with the cage. And after that was done, I printed the parts for about 20 hours and I had all the pieces. So I've got all the pieces printed here and this mini 3x3 isn't actually glued in yet. So you can see here this is one face with its center complete and all of its edges complete as well. And this is roughly what it looked like before I put any other pieces in. You can see that in terms of 3x3 extensions, it cradles all four of the corners on this side. And therefore, when these two halves are put together, all of the corners on this 3x3 are going to be bandaged together. So you can only make moves like this and like that. Which, I don't know if it'll be interesting to solve, but at the very least, it'll be interesting to look at. But that's beside the point. So I have to assemble this pretty weirdly because of the cage that surrounds the cube. What I'm going to do first is put some super glue on all of these faces here and then just stick it in here, glue it in. And then what I'm going to do is slowly add the middle layer pieces like this. Just on here. Do the edges first, obviously. You remember my method, which is corners and then edges and then centers. And then finally, put a center in. You can you can fit it in from the top like this and then just do that around and then what I'm gonna do is fit the final pieces to this cage piece just like I did here and then I'll just glue that on top of this layer and then the puzzle will be complete I really don't think it's gonna be disassemblable because again there's this cage and while the center caps are theoretically accessible, even unscrewing them won't really do anything because the cage on the outside is still protecting it. But I'll assemble it and let's see how it is. Okay, so you can see here that I finished putting the first two layers around the mini 3x3. And I've assembled the final layer, so all I've got to do now, as I said before, is to put some super glue in these cavities and on these pegs so that the puzzle all stays together once it is assembled. And now I just have to clamp these together like this until it's all dried and good to go. Once all the super glue is dried, I will sticker this puzzle up, take it outside, and we'll see how it turns.
Let's look at how the O2 cube turned out. This time I tried using Jonathan's aesthetic style, which means there's a lot of uncovered plastic near the edges of the cube, but the inward gaps between stickers are quite small. I think this style gives it quite a unique look, and it looks better than how it would have looked with the normal style. If I had stickered it like I usually do, in my opinion the circle would have looked much too small, and overall it would have been not very proportioned. If I make a 45 degree turn, you can see that I've also stickered all the edges, which you cannot see in the solved state. To get an idea of what the O2 cube is functionally equivalent to, take a 3x3 and only make middle turns on any axis. The resulting puzzle is not very difficult to solve and it usually doesn't require more than a few moves. However, I would say that the O2 cube is a bit harder than this 3x3 visualization because whenever you're done making a turn, all of the edges are hidden so you need to keep making 45 degree turns to check them. This is very disorienting and makes the puzzle take quite a bit longer to solve, in my experience. I guess just for fun I can show you what a checkerboard pattern looks like and that'll also give you a taste of the turning quality. Turns can be a bit difficult to initiate, but once you've got it going, it's not too bad. The edges of the centers are slightly above the actual edges, so that gives you a nice little grip that you can push to turn the layer. Overall though, the puzzle is still quite stiff because the mechanism is very tightly packed into its cage. At the very least, it corner cuts enough for that not to be a hindrance. I've never had to realign a layer due to a turn that was slightly blocked due to not enough corner cutting. My final thoughts on this puzzle is that it's more for aesthetics than functionality. It's something that looks good on a shelf, but not really something I see myself picking up and solving a lot. But anyway, without further ado, uh, let's scramble the puzzle and then see how it is to solve. Normally I would take the puzzle back inside for the solve, but this one's quite easy, so I'm going to do it here at the lake. Anyway, even though this puzzle is very easy, you still won't solve it if you're just moving it around randomly, so I've come up with a rudimentary method for solving it. The first thing I like to do is solve all the centers, which is extremely intuitive, and if I'm lucky, all the edges will be solved as well. It turns out that the edges are not solved, so now it's time for the next step. What I do is match edges with corners, and then I keep the edges in their spots by bringing the center back from a different axis than the one I used to take it out of its spot. If I do this enough times, all the edges will become solved due to the very large amount of symmetry this puzzle has.
And there, the puzzle is solved. That's really all it takes. This puzzle is, as I said before, very easy. Something that I didn't have to use but I found useful on other solves is an algorithm that swaps two center pairs without changing the edge permutations. I'll show you it while I'm wrapping up this video. To conclude, I personally think this puzzle is one that I'll put on a shelf and look at rather than solving a lot. It's too stiff for my liking and the solve itself isn't much on its own. It is still definitely a very cool experiment in my opinion and I'm glad I finally made my own one by one with circles type puzzle. Thank you all very much for watching and have a great afternoon.